Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual worship service at Wesley Chapel UMC, McDonough, Georgia. We're so glad that you have joined us this evening. Hey, listen, we're thanking God for all the things that the Lord has blessed us to be able to experience in this 2023 year. And as we approach a new season, we're trusting God for greater. Again, welcome to church. And we pray that this worship experience will bless your hearts. to you as we enter into a new season 
and a new year, 2024, may Jehovah Yahweh, God of hosts, fill you with hope, peace, joy, and love. For in Jeremiah 29, 11, God states he knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. God is not one to lie. Therefore, Happy New Year. I want to talk briefly from the subject, navigating the unknown. How many of you have ever found yourself in an unknown situation? Raise your hand. In an unknown season. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a new place uh, that you were unfamiliar with. Amen. I think that pretty much <laughs> covers everybody in the room. <laughs> and so navigating the unknown. In 2022, after a 15-year tenure in healthcare, I decided to branch out and do something different. Uh, I was thrust into the unknown. Uh, and having been in that particular occupation for so long, I knew it like the back of my hands. Uh, I knew the ins and outs of, of working in hospice and palliative care and hospitals and um, skilled nursing facilities. Uh, I had trained uh, many new hires in my role and I had been a consultant on new initiatives within the company. I knew all of my coworkers, all of my team, and I had lots of connections in that particular arena. I knew the jargon. Uh, I could speak the language, and I knew the strategies that were necessary. I understood the milieu, if you would, of working in that particular setting. I could do it with my eyes closed. I knew the geographic and sociological territory. It was from everything was familiar to me. And so after 13 years of being out of school, I decided that I would go back to school to pursue something different, say something different. Something different. And so I was starting over, all over again. I had to get accustomed to being in study groups again and doing projects and listening to two hour lectures after work. I had to learn how to follow a rubric and do research and balance work, life, and a little bit of play. <laughs> um, but I was starting over again. Then I went to work in a university setting, which was different from the capacity that I had come from. I had to learn a new role in a different sector and still keep a servant mind. I had to, come com I had to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and I sub submit to you, brothers and sisters, that as you are in whatever unknown season that you're in today, whatever unknown situation that you're thrust in, that sometimes we have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. In this realm of the unknown, we are forced sometimes to go another way, to go another way. Thoughts, Lord, and I've got 
When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Jesus is pulling us through. How many of you have a pull through praise right now? Because you know that it had it not been for Jesus on your side, had it not been for Jesus walking and talking with you, had it not been for Jesus covering you with the blood, had it not been had it not been, had it not been, had it not been for Jesus, where would we be? Well, on my way to church this morning, I received a phone call. And the phone call turned into prayer service. I received the phone call and, and the caller on the other line said, my mother's not doing good. I say, say more. They said, uh, she's uh, going in for surgery on Tuesday. My mother's 83 years old and, and the doctor found the cancer, a big ball on her jaw. I said, well, does mama know Jesus? And does mama have faith the size of a mustard seed? And she said, Mama been through this, and Mama been through that. So Mama's been through enough to know that God is able. And I began to minister to her. I said, well, call me on Monday because I want to have a prayer talk with your mother because I don't believe that God brought us this far to leave her now. I don't believe God brought her 83 years just to throw in the tower. But I believe that the Lord, even while we're on the phone call, is pulling her through. As a matter of fact, do you have faith? I said, because right now, God is shrinking the tumor. Do you believe that in your heart? I don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. The Lord is going to leave her now. Well, the songwriter said it this way. I've had my share of life's ups and downs. God's been good to me. Through the downs, he's been good. Through the ups, he's been good. In and out of situations, the Lord has been good. Now I need some folks to lay your stuff on the mat and let these mat barriers take it to Jesus. 
If you need in deliverance today, take it to Jesus. If you need in healing today, take it to Jesus. If you're all stressed out, don't know which way you're going, come on, come on, come on, take it to Jesus. How many of you know that he will, he will, he will, he'll work it out. Oh, yes, he will. Somebody's in the building right now. Body is wrapped with pain. But you decided that you're going to go to the house of prayer. You decided that you're going to get your healing today. All, all you got to do is lay your sickness, lay it on the mat. If you're worried about something right now, maybe it's somewhere to live. Maybe you need more money. Put your worry on the mat. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe you're depressed right now. Jesus said, come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Lay your depression on the mat. Lay your lack of faith on the mat. How many of you know that God will pull you through? How many believe that God will? Say 
brothers and sisters, listen to Romans chapter 8 verses 22 through 25 and also Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. A right now faith. A right now faith. Reflection on how God has provided for us during the happenings of 2023 has enriched my understanding of what Jesus has done for all. Jesus has opened the door to what it means to live in communion and reconcilement with Abba, our Father. We live in a world with other believers and sinners in the same ship, groaning together as we go through the turbulent waves of the result of sin. The difference is we believe, but we believers wait with a never-failing faith and with expectant hope 
that God will see us through whatever is in store for us in 2024. How do we know? We know because God has already seen us through some trials, tribulations, sicknesses, surgeries, all kinds of challenges, loss of loved ones, despair, unfulfilled dreams, fulfilled dreams, met milestones, and with celebrations during 2023. We stand confident that Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, will continue to sustain believers with a right now faith. As we weather the storms of life, while God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. My brothers and sisters, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow and that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever begin to imagine according to his power that is at work inside of us as we grip God's hand and forge forward into and through 2024. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You don't know what I've been through Let me share my story with you All the things that he brought me through My stormy days and my rainy All the tears I've cried The things I've kept Bottled up inside Trying My best to be strong Waiting on God
Let me share my story with you All the things he brought me through Ladies and gentlemen, as we forge a forward in this final word, we thank God for new seasons in our lives. Truly, the Lord has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. And as we close out the year 2023, we have so much to thank God for. And I want to share with you in terms of seasons, whether it's spring, whether it's summer, fall, or winter, you will be victorious. For the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. You see, we serve a God of seasons. We see it in creation. God created the four seasons that are based upon the rotation of the earth as it orbits the sun. The seasons change as the earth moves, but the sun in our planetary system remains constant. And everything revolves around it. And though we serve a God of seasons, he does not measure seasons with clocks nor calendars. But with your experience in the Lord is how you can relate to his timing. And every aspect of our life is like a season. And there is a purpose for those seasons. There is a reason for some challenging seasons in your life. There are seasons you would prefer not to go through. But looking back over circumstances and life's ups as well as life's downs, perhaps you can agree with me that you would not be who you are today without that challenging season. You may not understand why you went through it, but I assure you, it shaped who you are. So my brothers and sisters, today signifies the end of one season and the onset of a new season. New seasons come with changes, whether you have been a Christian all of your life or not. When you start a new season, it comes with change. Remember, we serve a God of seasons, even in creation. And each season is different from the other season. Some are meant for things to grow, and others for things to die off. You know, plants began to grow in the spring, and plants reach optimal growth in the summer, Leaves began to fall off their branches in the fall and leaves die in the winter. And if the root is not solid, the whole plant will die. But the question I have for you as we embark upon a new season, what season of life are you in right now? In some seasons, the days are longer. In others, the night is longer. And Peter entered a new season when Jesus called him to follow him. And the Bible tells us, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. You see, they were fishermen. And then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. 
And the Bible says that they immediately left their nets and they followed Jesus. And in the morning, Peter was just an ordinary fisherman. But by evening, when he met Jesus, he became a fisherman of men. God is calling us to a season of discipleship. You see, Peter stepped into a new season and was changed and he was made into and transformed into something that he was not. Friends, that's the transforming power of God's grace. So yes, new seasons, they, they come with challenges, a new terrain, a, new obstacles to cross, new milestones to set. Remember last season, you, you already had your routine. Whatever they were, good or bad, you had them. But I just want to let you know that this new season, let it begin wherever God chooses to work in your life. Let God determine the new season and be willing to embrace the challenge because Philippians 1 reminds us, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And as I said before, the, uh, the sun remains constant and, and as the earth rotates around it, the earth changes its season and in many ways, we see the signature of the same artist in our lives. Much like the earth, our lives should revolve around the S-O-N, Son, Jesus Christ. Our lives will change and we will enter and exit many seasons, but the sun remains constant yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. The seasons will change, but if Jesus is at the center of it, whether it's spring, whether it's summer, whether it's fall or winter, if your root is solid, transfixed onto Jesus in the center, while the past seasons might have failed you, this season will be a victorious one. For I'm reminded in 1 Corinthians, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Oh, yes, it's a new season. And as we leap into a new season, I encourage each and every one of us to allow Jesus to be the center of our joy because yesterday is gone and tomorrow is full of opportunities. Friends, it's a new season as we leap into another year. Can you celebrate with me this new season? It's a new season, yes, and it's a new day. It's a fresh anointing, and it's coming your way. Oh, yes, it is. Why don't you celebrate with me right where you are? Can we do it together? Oh, it's a new season. It's a new day. Yes, a fresh anointing, yes, is flowing my way, my way, a season of power, prosperity, it's a new season, it's coming to me. It's a new day, 
a fresh anointing, yeah, it's flowing my way, a season, season of power, Lord, a season of power and prosperity, it's a new season, it's coming to me. It's a new season, yeah, it's a new day, yeah, a fresh, fresh, fresh anointing um, is coming your way, a season of power, Lord, yes, prosperity, it's a new season, oh yes, and it's coming to you. with me because it's a new season the devil tried to steal your joy the devil's tried to steal your hope but look what God did he picked you up he turned you around he placed your feet on solid ground it's a new season oh the devil can't steal your joy the devil can't steal your peace the devil can't do anything to you. So let me help you understand how to handle the devil. You got to stop on the devil's head, yeah. Because it's a new season. So whatever it is, know that God is able to see you through. It's a new season. We all for cry to you oh my brother we we all for Christ to you oh my sister he will give you brand new life life of Just keep saying to Christ, to Christ, to Christ. To Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. And as we are feeling motivated about the new season ahead, we will not neg negate the fact that 
if God doesn't order our steps in his words, we will not be able to fulfill the assignment. So we encourage you as you leap into 2024, understand the assignment. No matter what gets aggravated on or challenging on this new journey, allow the grace of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit to lead you into the unknown, knowing that God will carry you through. Hey, it's a new season. Allow God to order your steps in his word. After the benediction, stay tuned in for a New Year's fireworks experience. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you and bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And Happy New Year!